Patty from the studio. I'm actually just outside the studio. There's my little space, my little slice of heaven. Anyway, I'm just out enjoying a nice uh, warm summery day. Still not going out too many places, so I thought let me do my second part haul video from my trip on Friday and I got some amazing things again and I click up here to see the video from yesterday part one and this is part two and actually the entire trip was a $49 spend so if you think of yesterday's haul plus today's haul you can see I got some great deals and I've done a lot of research for the things I'm going to show you today which um, I love and find interesting so come on in and let's see what the haul looks like One, we're back with a haul part two, starting off with this piece, which is a beautiful, I think it might've been a decanter. It's missing its lid, but looking at the mark, it's from the Wheaton Glass Company. And in my research, it's a New Jersey based glass company. And this particular mark was used in around 1970. The pattern is called feather overleaf and it's in amber now what I liked about this is there's no chips again I don't know if it's missing a lid but I have not been able to find anywhere online this particular pattern in that color so that means for me as a reseller there's not tons of them out there in the world so sometimes that's a good thing but just really pretty no chips and it was two dollars before my coupon so that's that i have so much over here it's going to be clinking the next item is a teapot and it's decorated with an image of the boston tea party and no chips usually you have to look in the lid is where you'll find most of the damage on these type of pieces and I'm going to try and put it back Patty without breaking it and also you look at the spout because that's where you'll find a lot of chips but I didn't see that it's a really pretty caramel colored glaze the handles in good condition $4.99 before coupon a little history of the Boston Tea Party and what's ironic to me anyway is it's made by a British company Arthur Wood England and when I looked up some information on this piece let me just refer to my notes if I can find it the comps for this particular piece run between 50 and 60 dollars in this condition so that's exciting it's just kind of ironic to me that a teapot celebrating the Boston Tea Party, but made in England. I guess they forgave us. That's pretty. It's a little heavy, but nice. The next item, these kind of ugly salt and pepper shakers, but they were a dollar and I just couldn't resist. I didn't want to leave them there, but there's some like odd paint job that maybe somebody tried to fix on their own they do not have any this one has a uh, stuck stopper the other one doesn't have any stopper so and one says I'm salt the other one says I'm pepper and Lakeland which makes me think it might have been a souvenir however these pieces were made in Japan and they were made in the 1930s and they represent the Bonzo dog which was a cartoon created in 1922 starred in one of the first cartoons ever, I think after Mickey Mouse. And it was one of the first items that started kind of a licensing craze. And it was a mass marketed character, the Bonzo dog. But again, it's from the 1930s. And a set in this condition, missing the stoppers, sells for about 15 to $20. So, not bad on the doggies. Okay, let's see. This next little creamer 
which I think might have had a lid at one point. But it is... Um, I'm sorry, I'm losing track of myself here. It is... Imperial Imari made in to look like an early 19th century Oriental porcelain circa 1820 from the private collection of Georges Briard. I have sold a few things of Georges Briard. He did a lot of mass marketing design back in the 60s, but um, I've seen some other pieces in this same design. Uh, I think it might have had a lid, which it's missing. It needs a lot of cleaning up. But I would expect for this, based on the other pieces I've seen, could go for around $15. So not a bad investment on $1.50. Before coupon, of course. And for my Irish friends these really pretty bowls soup or cereal bowls i think they call them coop bowls based on this shape this silhouette shamrock set of two for two dollars total and they're made by arclo and it's called honeystone limerick ireland and a pattern number of 8147. Now I looked this up and surprisingly, these go for really good money. Um, it seems to be a somewhat popular pattern and based on the selling comps, these bowls are going for 25 to $35 each. So that's exciting. And even though it's like St. Patrick's Day themed, I would still list it anyway this time of year because I find things sell all year round. But I probably would have like a Christmas in July um, sale. So stay tuned. One item that I consistently sell are mugs. And kind of keeping with the United Kingdom theme, this is a Royal Heritage mug excellent condition. It was $2 and it's her ladyship. It like screamed Downton Abbey to me. So I might put that as a keyword, you know, fun little British graphics and it's all marked, not vintage, but still really cute. And people love that kind of stuff. And the, um, selling comps for this have run about $20. And again, this was $2. But I think it's really fun. And again, like I said, mugs are um, very popular for me. So going back to my Japan Asian theme, this beautiful little vase is marked Jap Japanese porcelain ware ACF Hong Kong, which I believe is an importer, but it's decorated in Hong Kong for $2 and it's got a interior white glaze, but the exterior, I don't think it's hand painted. I think it's transfer art, but what I liked is to find this beige coloration is a little more unusual than you see it mostly in white, but again, a really pretty motif trimmed up there, but I'm, I'm have to look more closely. There's a way to tell with like a magnifying loop if it's hand painted or transfer wear. Transfer wear is usually you can tell it's almost pixelated when you look really close like newspaper print and hand painted has a whole different look to it. So I'm not entirely sure yet, but this type of vase, but I, again, I haven't found this exact design. It goes anywhere between 26 and $55. It's a very pretty piece. So I liked it and I liked the comps. Next we have a little creamer and sugar. And I always am happy when I can find a set with the lid. It's got much better potential, although you'll see I bought a 
sugar jar without a pitch uh, creamer. It's really dirty. It's got to be cleaned up. However, I didn't see any chips. I didn't see any cracks in it. And it's marked Encore Japan, which is, in looking it up, vintage, I think, 50s, 1950s. Uh, it doesn't go for huge amounts of money, but I would expect, because it's in good condition and it's a set, I would expect $20, as far as I can tell. And what's nice, again, that I can identify the pattern, there are people, there are also companies that try to source out missing pieces for their collection. So, you know, if Grandma had a set of this particular pattern, China, but maybe the lid is missing or they didn't have the sugar bowl, that's how I end up getting a lot of my sales. And again, the Japan theme, this gorgeous sugar bowl with lid is from uh, Noritake Moromura Brothers, who founded Noritake. And it's all hand-painted, excellent condition. The gold is a little frayed or fading because that's always, you know, where you would pick it up. So that's a normal thing. And when I discovered the mark where it says uh, hand-painted with a Noritake wreath with an M and Nippon, I can date this particular piece to be between 1890 and 1921. And a little history lesson, if pieces are marked Nippon, you can definitely date it to pre-1921 because in 1921, there was a McKinley Tariff Act, which made a mandate for anything being imported into the United States had to have the country of origin. So Nippon is a, I believe, a Japanese word for Japan, and you will only see that in these older pieces, because then they started to say made in Japan. The one exception to that would be these pieces. Two cups and two saucers in a beautiful, very delicate, lightweight porcelain and I don't know if I'm focusing right, I can't really see it. But it's Kingswood, China. Aragon is the pattern. And it says Occupied Japan. Now again, a little history. Occupied Japan is a mark that's only used on items from 1947 to 1952. So that way it's very easy to date the history. But again, beautiful, lightweight porcelain, um, very typical of that style to see a white center with a more off-white border, hand-painted. These are definitely hand-painted. And in looking at the selling comps, they're going for about $15 each. And a set of two, again, is always a little more desirable than singles. They had others there, but unfortunately they had big boo-boos. So the final piece for today is this basket of fun. Now, when I first saw the tea, I saw the teapot on my first visit earlier in the week, and it was separate. When I went back on Friday, they had kind of consolidated all the pieces in a basket for $6.99 before coupon. So that was a deal, and I decided to grab it. And these are really interesting. This is called Lusterware. If you kind of see, it's almost a little iridescent to it. And Lusterware is an overglaze containing copper and silver that makes the colored glaze underneath really sparkle and a very unique sheen, highly collectible. And these are marked Mipoko, Germany. And again, Mipoko was a um, importer from Germany and Japan post-World War II. 
And these pieces are, although they're all like in good shape, he's still attached to the tape. They're just really dirty. So I have some cleaning to do and I'm hoping they'll come out okay. But there were, I think three or four cups with saucers. And again, here's that glow. And ironically, Lusterware is highly collectible these days. But when these pieces were made, they were made primarily for dime stores and places like Sears. So they were affordable imports for people and highly collectible. See how dirty that one is? Yeesh. So, but I'm hopeful I'll be able to get those clean. If not, I sell them as they are and hope for the best. And there's a little lid. But again, you see that iridescence, that glow? And no chips. There's a little crack over here, but doesn't appear, appear to affect the integrity of the piece. So, I, I mean, I just lucked out with this thrifting visit and I hope you like seeing all the pieces and learning a little bit about what to look for when you go out to your Goodwills, your thrift stores, garage yard sales, estate sales. They're starting to pick up again in my area a little bit. So hopefully you might go out and find some treasures yourself and you don't really have to spend tons of money. And I hope I've given you some hints on what to look for. So again, thank you for joining me. Please like, subscribe, and comment, and I will try to keep bringing you fun content. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for joining. Bye.